Governor, thank you for doing this. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure. We, like you, have been hearing from a lot of Canadians, and we're in this difficult position. We're, we're in a place where the economy isn't slowing by enough just yet. The labor market remains really tough. And I think what people want to know is how bad are we willing to let it get to get inflation back under control? Well, Peter, look, I think you, you've laid it out pretty, pretty well. Um, we've, we've raised interest rates rapidly. That's starting to have an effect. We can see the effects in the, the more interest sensitive parts of the economy, like housing, for example. Um, and we, we do expect to see more of the effects going forward. Uh, we do think uh, we still need to raise rates a little bit further. Uh, how far we will see. Uh, I mean, as you said, look, we still got a uh, an economy that it's in excess demand. It's overheated. And, and basically the way I would explain it is demand is here, supply is here. Demand is slowing, but the difference between these two, that's still putting upward pressure on inflation. So we do need to slow the economy. We don't want to overslow it. We don't want to make this more difficult than it has to be. But at the same time, if, we're, if we don't do enough, if we're half-hearted, Canadians are going to have to continue to endure the high inflation that is harming them every day. But do you have a target? Like, you know, we saw the jobs numbers come out. And do you, do you have a target or maybe a guardrail of how far you don't want it to go in terms of the unemployment rate or, or GDP growth or whatever it may be, some of these indicators? Well, we have a target. We have an inflation target. Uh, right. and, but to, and to get there, you need to influence the other ones. Yes. I mean, the way, you know, we, we affect interest rates and, in, and interest rates affect spending. So we need to slow spending. I mean, what, we, what we've put out in our forecast a couple weeks ago is we actually think growth is going to be close to zero for the next few quarters, till about, about the middle of next year. And then we think it's going to pick up. Uh, so there is going to be, that's going to be a significant slowing. Unemployment rate is going to go up. We're not talking about you know, high unemployment rates that we've seen in past recessions, but it, it is going to go up. The, the labor market is, is very tight. That's a symptom of an economy that can't keep up with all the, the uh, pr can't produce all the goods and services Canadians want to buy. Inflation's kind of notoriously slippery. That, you know, first it was in energy prices and then it was in, you know, a, a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, in the, in the US numbers we saw today, it, it showed up primarily in rents and it just kind of keeps moving. Given that, how hard is it to know when you're at the inflection point and what numbers, you know, the three month or the six month or the nine month trends are telling you? How hard is it to figure out where we are in that curve? Uh, it is difficult. And, and you can't, and there's no kind of single number that we're looking for. Right. You've got to kind of add it all up. You've got you to put a few, you've got to see a few months together. You know, one, one data point doesn't create a trend. Uh, you've got to see a few points together. So one of the, you know, some of the things we're looking for, our CPI numbers coming out next week. Um, if you look at the last couple CPIs, I would say the good news is that underlying inflation, or what we call core inflation, it stopped going up. Uh, but it hasn't really rolled over. It hasn't really started coming down. So that's one thing we're going to be looking for. Is it going to stay where it is? Is it going to start to come down? Um, of course, our target is in total CPI inflation, we, we, you know, we're resolute in our commitment to get total CPI inflation back to 2% target. That's what Canadians expect. But you know, all, you know, things like uh, oil prices are determined in global markets, we don't control those. But what we do control is the balance between demand, or influence anyways, the balance between demand and supply in the economy. And that's not, it's, it's not right right now. Since 2008 uh, and the financial crisis, I think most people have lived with the fact that they think central banks mostly come out to help them. They, they drop interest rates, quantitative easing, they take actions to try to grease the economy along. Is it, is it counterintuitive for them and thus for your messaging to explain the role of the central bank in a period where the bank is actively making things worse? I get to make them better down the road, but for today, people are pinched. Uh, I'm sure some of this does feel a bit counterintuitive, but what I would stress is through this whole period, our actions have been guided by our mandate, controlling inflation, low, stable, predictable inflation. And, and you know, when we plunged into the pandemic and, and, and the economy uh, really fell off a cliff, uh, three million Canadians unemployed in, in, in you know, six weeks, um, the real concern was that you know, we're headed into 
uh, uh, another depression, right. uh, deflation, uh, and and so. We did take bold action, and together there was bold fiscal action. Unfortunately, effective vaccines were, were developed, and all that, we had actually the fastest recovery ever. Um, now we're on the other side of that, and you know, we, we've got to get things back to normal. And so, yes, we have been raising interest rates rapidly, and I get it. That is a bit counterintuitive for Canadians. I mean, you know, their, their rent's going up, their groceries are more expensive, gasoline's more expensive, and now their borrowing costs are more expensive. So, so how does that work? Well. That does slow spending. It makes it makes anything you buy on credit more expensive, so you you pull back, and that helps get the economy balanced, and that'll relieve those price pressures. How much do you think we really know about how inflation works, and and thus how we know what we're doing is the right thing to do? Um, well, what, what I will say is, uh, you know, this isn't the first time we've had high inflation, uh, and I think one of the things that's happening now is you know, we haven't had inflation this high in more than 30 years. And unfortunately, we are relearning the corrosive effects of inflation yep. in society. And, and yeah, people are frustrated. They feel, they feel helpless. Um, so, but what I will say is, you know, we've had 30 years, more than 30 years of, uh, of an inflation target. And it's, you know, we've had fluctuations in inflation before. This is the biggest test we've ever had. But monetary policy works. It takes time to work, and we do have to go through a difficult adjustment, but it works, and we will come out of this. Uh, growth will pick up, uh, we'll have solid employment growth, and we'll have low inflation. Is there something to be said, though, for the fact that I think we're basing a lot of our thinking on how this inflation crisis is playing out on the last inflation crisis in the 70s and 80s, and is it the same? I mean, corporate profits are different. Wages are different. The way, you know, the, the labor market is very different. Do we need to have a different response to this crisis because it's so different from the last one? Well, it is certainly, I mean, the pandemic, almost everything about this, this cycle is, is unprecedented. I mean, it was, it was caused by a pandemic. Uh, it, it's not, you know, it was not caused by an economy that was out of balance before the, you know, the pandemic hit. And actually that, that's a good thing because that that is one of the reasons why we've been able to bounce back so much quicker this is the fastest recovery we've ever had um, but i think we've also discovered that reopening an economy is a lot more complicated than closing one and it doesn't just happen smoothly and there are a lot of repercussions and so yes we need higher interest rates to sort of dampen spending and get things more back to normal last question it, and and it, it it might be more simple than I think, but is there an argument to be made for, it takes what, 18 months for monetary policy to work its way into the economy, yeah. roughly. Good uh, we've moved pretty aggressively on that. Is there not an argument to say, maybe we hit the pause button now and see where we're at in three or six months, rather than continue down this path? Like why the urgency now, if it does take that long and, and there are so many of So look, we, we raise rates rapidly. Um, 100 basis points, a full percentage point in July. Uh, most recently, our last decision uh, was was half a percentage point, 50 basis points. So uh, we have reduced the pace of increases. Um, you know, with inflation at 7%, with an economy that's still in excess demand, we do think that there is a need for further increases. But we are getting closer to the end of this tightening cycle. I can't tell you exactly what, what that is. I can tell you what we're following and what will will help us make that decision. But, but you know, we're not there yet. But we are getting closer. Listen, that's all the time we have. But I really appreciate you making the time to speak with us today. The pleasure, Peter. Thank you.